All right, everybody, welcome to this Thursday night's edition of the Live Well here at Fish North Georgia on YouTube. We want to thank you for taking your time to join us. And again, if you're watching, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. So, yeah, guys, we got a great show tonight. Uh, Kevin Thornton's in the house with us. We got Tim McGuire back there in the back. Put that picture on you back there, Tim. There you go, Tim. Uh, Jonathan will be here. Jonathan Farmer will be here in a few minutes. Um, but we're going to talk pre-spawn bass fishing. When I say pre-spawn bass fishing to you, Kevin, what does that mean to you? Uh, to me, it means the fish are starting to move out of the deep water, moving on up, uh -huh. usually around the mid 40s, late 40s, yeah, up into the mid 50s. They're hungry, so they're going to be eating and chasing anything. Yeah, it's one of the better times. It, it's funny, you know, people talk about, oh, it's too cold to fish right now. Winter fishing is amazing. And going up into the pre spawn and spawn is even better because they're getting active. They're getting really active. Like you said, they're chasing baits. They're trying to gorge themselves up to get ready for the spawn. Yep. And so, you fish, I know we handle, we talk a lot about these highland reservoirs up here with Lanier and Alatoona, and I know you fish Alatoona, but you've also fished other lakes like Oconee, lakes down south and everything. So I wanted, before Jonathan got here and we really jumped on these northern lakes, I wanted to get your take on lakes like Oconee and Sinclair, what this time of year, what those guys are looking at, since you've got some experience. And you're from Florida too, so I mean, there's, I assume there's a pre-spawn in Florida there as is. well. There is. So. Oh, I'm used to the grass in Florida, which we don't have up here. We don't. No, I'm I, when I go to Sinclair Oconee, I'm looking for the usually the north side coves, uh, little pockets off the main lake, uh, looking for deep water close by access. Uh, we throw one spinner bait, crank bait, rattle trap, and a jig. Yeah, those are my four primary. That's your four primaries right there. And oh, Stephen Barday is in the house. I didn't know Stevie Ray Vaughn played with Van Halen, he didn't, he wasn't good enough. <laughs> so, you know, that's just the way it is. Now, don't get me wrong. Stevie Ray Vaughan is on my Mount Rushmore of guitar players, but he ain't at the top big dog like that. But, you know, a talent definitely went way too soon. Uh, Connor Hewitt, where pre-spawn equals spot choker, equals spot choker. You know, what? what's funny, you know, the underspin game now has changed fishing so much that it's a year-round bait, really. Guys are throwing swim baits and spot chokers. Swim or, bait's another great bait. Yeah, it is. Swim bait is a great bait. Uh, all the way up to, um, well, really all year. But what's funny is, is it is one of those few baits that I think works year round, just depending on where you throw it. I think during the, the pre-spawn, there are any number of baits because they're just chasing and eating anything at this point. Yeah, they are. Now, I'll, here's a question. I'm going to ask this to Jonathan when he gets here too. But in your opinion, you know, largemouth. What's up, Casey Blanton? Largemouth and uh, spots there have to be a little bit different uh attitudes from the fish towards pre-spawn now and i ask you that because you know you go down to oconee and those lakes and coming from florida you're going to be much more large mouth oriented on those lakes like that have you no excuse me so have you noticed coming up here fishing alatoon and all just from your experience in the past to now can you tell a difference in how you approach those two fish or how they react yeah to me, the, the spots move a lot more. The, at this time, that time of the year, pre-spawn, they're going to be moving. You might find them today in one pocket, and the next two days later, they might have moved down two, three other pockets, or they might have moved out, depending on the weather. Where a large mouth don't move that much. Right. So it's a little They bit, hunker down. They hunker down. So, so Tim, you know, um, I want your take on it. You know, pre-spawn, what does pre-spawn mean to you? Fish starting to come out of their deep haunts, yeah, uh, yeah. getting on maybe primary points, starting to get ready to move back in. And it's usually the buck bass going to move up first. So you got smaller fish, but uh, a good moving bait. And I like worms. A good moving bait and you like worms. I like worms. Yeah. Get a good shaky head or something going on. I do find that out. And, um, you know, I think pretty much anything, like you said, anything works from right now on up into the spawn because they're just – that's what I found. Yeah, yeah, they're just hungry. They're hungry. And if a guy wants to throw a huge swim bait, he can throw a huge swim bait. If you're a crankbait guy, there's that rock crawler bite and it's going to I still worms. think you need to match the bait though. You know, you if do. you're in a shad lake or something like that, it needs to be shad oriented. Yeah, um, this is the time of the year that whatever your favorite go to confidence bait is, yeah. As long as you maybe scale the size like Kevin said now, and I mean you can go get busy and have a good, good day. You can. So Jeremiah goes, bass fishing is cool. But y'all should have been there for that insane bluefish blitz <laughs> I was on last weekend. Well, listen, if you can get if you can get it where we ain't got to travel and you get the bluefish up here, hey, we I'd, I'd fish it. But yeah. I bet that was really cool. Uh, Ron Swinford, 
pre-spawn, they move to the tips of those longer points. Yes, they out do. Into the they lake do. and all that. So that's, you know, and the, the they'll th follow the ditches up too, Danny. Yeah, I know you don't want to talk ditches, but, but no, I mean, I, the ditch bite's still part of it, and the ditch bite will go for, you know, till the water temperature starts warming up. But there's always going to be a population of fish that move up early. Oh yeah, and there's always a population of, of fish that bed earlier than other fish because you know bedding comes in waves. So I would imagine pre-spawn comes in waves with certain fish. Two, three, four months. Yeah, that's a good point, Danny. Because when people think, "Oh, it's spawn," they're all gonna move up at one time. It's just wave after wave. It is. We you'll saw you'll have people that's like, "Man, I was catching fish that were in spawn mode, and it's like a month after everybody else was." Yeah. It's just another wave that moved up. I know that Ryan and I saw bass on bed in June last year on Lake Lanier. On Lake Lanier, they start going on bed on Lake Lanier in March. So uh, March, April, May, June, four months. So it's a it's a prolonged period. So I would imagine if that's the case, those late bedders or late pre spawners, or I don't know what triggers it. You know, Mother Nature, whatever. But I don't think they lay all their eggs at one time either. So that's part of the the spawning ritual. They might come up bed early than a month. Yeah, later, some of the bigger females. Again. You think so? Yeah, I don't think they spawn all at one time. I I, I have no idea. Lay right all there. their eggs. Uh, pull up. Let's see. Derek O's got a question right there for us. And again, guys, hey, you drive the you drive the show. You guys keep your comments coming. Thoughts on Bigs Real Estate shopping their spawn area early. So, hmm. uh, actually, some of the big girls going up, checking the place out, seeing what kind of guys there, what the dating scene looks like. You got any thoughts on that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. You've been out of the dating scene a while now, so yeah. I guess so. But I, I, again, I think that goes back to what we're saying. Some move up early, but I, I can see that. Now, I don't know what they're looking for, but I imagine as they're eating, probably the bucks get in their mind, as we all do, because we know what guys think with. They're the ones that are going up there thinking love before the females are. Wouldn't you think so? Yes. You know, so the bucks are going, the bucks are probably up there. Checking out the real estate. Yeah, that's a nice set Their of rocks. Their genetics tell them to do that. Yeah, that's a nice set of rocks. I bet I could get a big girl on that. <laughs> yeah, one. probably so. You know, they're checking out the place. Big girl gonna like that. So we all. I like big girls. So that's, there you go. That's not about my wife. So right. Watch this. I just kid. Uh, Jeremiah Giles. Let's see. I still believe the biggest bass move up first. Pre spawn begins much earlier than people think, and that's what kind of why I wanted to talk about it a little bit tonight, because it is. Almost mid January, a little past mid January, uh, but March will be here, and there are going to be some fish on bed before you know it. Especially South Georgia, as it warms up a little earlier there, they're probably hell. They're probably already on bed in Florida, ain't they? When, uh, when does the spawn start in Florida? The end of January, first of February. Okay, but the weather so has go. a lot to do with it too now. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a big tournament going out of uh, Okeechobee, I think, the end of this month, right? And they'll be looking for spawners. Ain't that crazy? It's what, what's funny too. It's almost like deer hunting too, like the rut in Georgia. Come on, Jonathan, get over and jump on. Jonathan Farmer finally walked in the house there. Everybody give him a big applause there. We got the celebrity. The celebrity. Is here. <laughs> Three Chinese cheers. Three Chinese oh, cheers. Fooey, 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 right fooey. There. Jump on right there, dog. You want a beer? Am I going to say no to one? Do you want you want an Edelweiss Meadery product right there? Jump into that. 1883 is a beer, and the rest is mead. So you can get that. Let's let's pull that camera up. Make sure yeah. that. He wants that 1883 right yeah. there. So there you go. Let's, let's so get him situated. Make sure he's seen. Over there, Josh. Jonathan's kind of tall. We may have to kick the camera Look up just a that. smidge. That's what on. happens when the gentle giant shows up. Look at that smile. So your camera's going to be right over there if you want to look at people so they can see them pretty eyes. How was work today? I don't want to talk about Okay, that. good. So we're going to talk fishing. So just to fill you in, we're talking pre spawn fishing. All right, how you like that? I love it. Okay, good. My time of year. I'm talking about the beer, dude. <laughs> Oh, it's good. Okay. So here's what we're talking about so far. Uh, Pre-spawn is going to basically, almost from now, depending on part of state you are, on up into March. You know, you kind of agree with that. They're getting ready to go on bed and all that. And so what were, Kevin, what were the baits you said you like pre-spawn? The spinner bait, rattle trap, crank bait, and a jig. And I think that's really influenced by where you've come from and the lakes you fish. Yeah. Now, down if I was more in Florida, and I can do it up here too, uh, Weightless Senko, not wacky rig, just a weightless Senko. Weightless Senko, just rig like Texas rig. Yep. Kind of like that. Okay, farmer, the world wants to know. They're dying with bated breath. <laughs> what do you like to do? Actually, let's start off with this. What does pre spawn mean to you? I've asked the other guys that. What does pre spawn mean to you? It means the fish are feeding up, getting ready to spawn. 
They're Simple enough. Fat, fat and fat. happy. Fat and happy. That's the country boy answer right there. So, um, <laughs> what kind of approaches are you going to be taking with them? A lot like his. Um, I'm I'm looking for my channel swings close to spawning base. Is where I'm looking. Deep water for, to shallow. Deep water shallow, but close to where they can just move up quick, spawn, move right back out. So the guy has like so access to deep water. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right where your creek channel comes in, slams up against uh, the opposing bank. Okay. Or um, north facing pockets because they're going to be the first ones to warm up in the year. Um, I also like to look for uh, areas that provide a lot of bait and food for these fish. Okay. Uh, creeks are a big. Yeah. Big one. You got crawfish, brim, everything's moving up all at once. They do. Speaking of weather, I joke about Georgia creating several uh, pre spawn seasons, but all seriousness, with the up and down temps, do our bass have several pre spawns or is it a definite time frame? And that's a good question because, like we just said, it's in the 20s tomorrow and Saturday and this weekend. A lot of tournaments canceled, and then it's going to be in the you know, 50s and 60s all next week, and then we'll probably have another one of them. Arctic fronts move down and drop it back down. So, uh, Jonathan, I'll throw that to you. You know, what do you think about that? Is it really just an entire area? Does the weather dictate it? Um, uh, is it a set time frame? What do you think? It's not a set time frame. Fish are going to – they need a certain water temp to spawn. So, I look for – for it to get back to mid-50s. That's what kicks it in to really start moving these fish back shallow, getting ready to make that push back to the back of these spawning bays and these blow or a spot for spots blow throughs. Right. I mean, lar I'm talking largemouth when I say spawning bays. Um, the yeah. spots you can go like, oh, we'll say Carter's last year. Um, I was out in the middle of the lake on a hump that come up to eight foot and they were spawning all over it. Really? Yeah. So it's spots will spawn out in the middle of the lake. Largemouth are more of the ones that'll go in well, back of these spawning bays. Spots are just strange creatures. Definitely. They're absolutely strange. Well, they're creatures. usually deeper spawners, too. I mean, oh, 15 they, foot. Yeah, they're they spawning 15, 15 20 foot. foot at least, yeah, yeah. They do. Bass are 15 or 5 to 15, maybe. Yeah. On largemouth. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. Now, uh, we had a question earlier, too, or I brought up the topic from largemouth to spots. Pre-spawn about the same or a little bit different for each one of them? What's your thoughts on that? Largemouth, if I'm pre if I'm targeting straight largemouth, I actually look for dirty water in pre-spawn. I don't want that crystal clean stuff we've got. Right. I you want know, you dirty, like trash water. I like well, not dirty water, not you who stained. Right, but yeah, a heavy yeah, stain, you like it. eight inches to a foot. Yeah, I'm happy. Um, because you're throwing a crankbait in that stuff a lot. Chatterbait, crankbait, uh, rattle trap. I'm throwing our spinnerbait. You're, are you trying to get a reaction bite? At that time of year, I'm trying yes. to get. I think the biggest fish in the lake is going to eat something that goes by its face, and it goes. I either I either eat or I don't. Yeah. Not drop something down and get to look at it for five minutes. Go. Eh. Yeah, they don't yeah. get to study well, on that's it. That's power fishing. Yeah, yeah power yeah. fishing. Well, it's a power fishing him. time yes, of year. Yeah. So you think you think power fishing in the pre-spawn is more successful than finesse? I, and I know I you go, like I, the power fish. So. I love the power fish. I don't like finesse fishing that much, which right. I get I get beat quite a bit because I'm too stubborn to right. switch over to the finesse. But during the pre-spawn, I'd say power outweighs finesse. Right. Except uh, for maybe after a cold front comes through and knocks them in the head. Yeah. <laughs> then you got to slow down. Then you got to slow down. Jeremiah says uh, bass will spawn more than once in a year. He's yep. heard from biologists, so that kind of plays in on what you were saying. Yeah, that went with what Kevin was talking about. Yeah, and Darian Moss said, what do we think about the new Berkeley Craig, Craig and the finisher? You knew this one's coming. I knew it was yep. coming. So he, he, I'm, we're going to talk about that real quick, and uh, then we'll get on down. Just keep it at that comment. You guys keep the questions coming, and as we scroll, we'll get to them. Um, what was the bait we talked about when we were talking about the credge? What did you say? The banjo? It, not the or banjo. The flying, the flying, the flying lure. minnow. Does it not remind you the old flying lure? The flying lure. It goes up, 
and falls back to the back. I think it's I think it's I think it's a pretty neat concept, but I, I think it will play better with the forward facing sonar guys. Yeah, definitely. I think it's something they can watch a little bit better. So if if you uh I'm not saying it's not a good bait. It's yeah. no different from the jerk bait. It just falls back. It's a jerk bait with the bill turned differently. It's kind of like a spy bait, jerk bait combo. It's a heavier what heavier weighted jerk bait that goes down and the lips inverted so when you jerk it it goes up instead of down yeah and, and it falls which, backwards yeah and the which, uh which it's connected at the front of the bill instead of back onto it mm -hmm. and when it falls it shimmies like a spy bait mm -hmm. it just sits there and goes which, that direction. which it intrigues me because then you get a jerk bait action deeper than you've ever got a jerk bait these fish never see have never seen a jerk bait that deep yeah you can get it down you can get well i mean it sinks as as you, you get it sink. to the bottom as as you let it sink so it's kind of like a hybrid bait well you just said forward facing sonar that's what they're it's see it and i down. think both of those baits are geared to the forward facing sonar. Oh, that, well, that, that, on the packet it has ffs yeah on it so it's for the forward facing <laughs> sonar. which which is funny and we're not going to get into a forward facing sonar debate no. on this thing but it, it is how forward facing sonar is changing the industry for bait manufacturers because guys are using it, and if you can create the bait that the forward-facing guys can use to their advantage, they're going to buy it. It's all – I mean, it's its smart. It's a good-sized bait. You can see it easier. Too. It is, and I think that finisher is the same thing. It's more of kind of like – I don't know what the action the finisher is on, on that. I think it's more of like it sinks. I, I, I've never fished with anyone, but I think it sinks and goes down, but I think you can fish it more Demichius because the line ties on top of the head. There's no bill to it whatsoever. So it, it's a it darts too. So is it like that? It'll dart back it and like forth. The Rapala ice jig or whatever that is. The what's the I, I what's the Rapala plug that's got the two plastic pieces that come off the back and got the single hook. I have no Rapala idea. Rapala makes it. I know what you're talking about. I, I, is it kind of like that? I'm guessing if it's we'll have to uh, we'll pull with up a 90 picture. degree angle time. Listen, yeah. as, as far as what do we think about it? If it catches fish and you have confidence in it, use it. Uh, oh, I've not fished. Has anybody anywhere. used it? It just came out. I know they got them at some of the local tackle shops. I plan on getting some here. So. Yeah, if anybody yeah, in the comments has used yeah, it. The comments, you use it. We'll catch up with you. Pull up Stephen Bardet's comment right there. Uh, caught a 7.3 in a BFL in February on Lanier. Three foot of water in the back of a pocket earlier than you would expect. Now, let me tell you this, Bardet. So, the electric series went out uh, last Saturday out of uh, Bald, uh, Mary Alice Park, so Bald Ridge Marina. The winning weight was, I think, 23.48, and they had a seven-plus large mouth. So that's January – what the hell was last Saturday? The 12th or 13th or 11th, whatever. Today's, 12th. what, the 18th? Mm -hmm. So last Saturday is Thursday. So the 13th, 13th. seven-plus uh, caught out of Bald Ridge Marina on that. And I do know that a lot of those guys like to go up as they come out of Mary Alice Park, take a left – go back in behind the marina and get up there. And from all that rain that we had the week before, you get that really stained water. And I know a lot of guys like to go up there and throw like the fret sides, the real thin crankbaits, into, kind of like what you like to do, into that stained water and get that reaction by Yeah, But, yeah, I, I, I definitely believe that right there. Well, we had a seven and seven plus in the uh, ABA as well weighed in. Yeah, they're there. Um, Alex Prince caught it in four foot of water. I did not ask uh, Geiger. He wanted, him. didn't he? Yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't ask Handily. him. I didn't ask him how deep that <laughs> largemouth came out of. But I will tell you who tied the jigs that helped him right there. So, all right. So, uh, largemouth spawn a little earlier. I have heard that. Uh, Berkeley Copycat Shop is very busy again. So, Ron, so that's an interesting comment, Ron. Uh, apparently, you know a little bit more than we do. So, if you know the baits that you think they might be, throw it in the comment section right there. I would love to know about it. I do know that when it came out with their, uh, what was it? The Col what, what was the one? It was it Col not Col Col Shad? Is that the Berkeley? Is that the Berkeley big swim bait? Was that that's, the Col Shad? That's Spro. Spro's the Col Shad. What was that other one that they had to recall? Oh, um, it's kind of like the mag draft. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. I know a lot of people spoke about that, but let's be honest. You can only redesign so many baits now. I mean, if there's a bait out there, there's really nothing new under the market. So um, I can definitely see other companies, but it, it's like a jig. There's only so many colors and like that, but that'd be interesting. There it is, the jig. There's now. also the Rapala uh, Ice Jig. That's what yeah. you were talking about. Yeah. Where was that on the corner? Right there, Ron Swinford, hey, right Ron. there. You can always count on Ron. Ron is a... 
bevy of knowledge like he is right there. He's one of the best. I love it when he comes up here. Reed Casey's. Yeah, Casey Blanton uh, right there above him right there. Been putting a 3 eighths weight on a plus one jerk bait for years. The credge is that on steroids. Hmm, okay, so Casey dropping some juice right there tonight, right there. Yeah, so you guys that's in the not comments not even sugar section, free, I is love, it? I love, I love, I love our comment section. Uh, go up one more. Yeah. Uh, Carter's spot spawn out in open water with a question mark. How deep, Mitchell Hensley would like to know. So, Jonathan Farmer, since you brought up seeing spots out there on Carter's, but that was on a hump. They were on they were on three different humps. I could run, I could literally sit down and catch eight off that one hump, go to the next one, catch eight, eight more, it was, and just keep going back and forth. They what were what, all what time of year was that? That was um April. In April. April. So I can see them out there. But they I would say, yeah, they're not definitely out in open water. They were on the hump. They were on a sandy hump. They, what sandy it was hump. what it was is they were pushed up there spawning. Um, they do it on every lake through blow throughs, um, sandy humps. Um, do blow throughs you, is definitely a near thing. Oh, well, yeah, they, they spawn spot spawn on blow throughs no matter what lake you're on, right? Um, but you can go out through there, and spots are so much more aggressive than largemouth when they're on bed. You can literally throw anything up there, and they're going to attack it. Uh, one way that I found that I can actually find if they're on that blow through is taking a mag draft or a big swim bait and throwing it up there and they'll come and attack it. You might not hook them. You know, they're there. Now you can come back 15 minutes later when they've set back up and throw a smaller swim Look bait or that. worm up there and pick them up. Farmer dropping the juice right there. Uh, Michael Temples had a comment earlier. We're already talking pre-spawn. No, oh, yeah, it was a spro, was the Chad Shad. That's right. Chad Shad, yeah. You were right. Go. It was a call shad. So, you know, that's, yeah, Michael, it is, you know, we've talked ditches pretty much kind of, even with the guests that we've had. Um, yeah, the call shad. So, but, you know, that's the thing is like, um, now, but I wouldn't technically say that, though, the credge is a jerk bait. It's not technically a jerk bait, is it? It's like a hybrid between like the, the riser and the, yeah, a jerk bait because it rises as you pull it. I mean, mm -hmm. you can jerk that thing from the bottom and keep jerking, and it eventually is going to come all the way to the top. Right. From what I've seen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't own one. I, do, I don't. I don't have <laughs> one either. Yet. Not yet. Uh, Barday says I wouldn't doubt it. For what I've seen, there's a lot more largemouth on the south end of Lake Lanier than people think. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And not only are they being caught shallow, but during this uh, past summer and all that. And fall. A lot of them were being caught deep out in open water in places that you wouldn't expect it. But yeah, Lake Lanier's the largemouth population on Lake Lanier is really rebounding uh, quite well. And there's some big girls in there. So the Berkeley Nessie was a blatant copy. Uh, Farmer, did you retie that jerk bait? What does that mean? Do I retied that jerk bait before that Saturday tournament, which I'm not going to talk about. I, I... <laughs> Broke. Did it break? Did you did you no. lose one? No, I uh, I tripped over my own feet on that tournament. We're just gonna say that. Oh, okay, well, you know what? Hey, let's say this. I think a lot of people are like, they want to know what you catch them on and all that. But sometimes what you did wrong or what you didn't catch them on is still as valuable information. So what did farmer do? That's wrong? some of the best informations. Yeah. What's the what? Yeah. Look at you smiling like that. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna prod at you, dog. I went against my better judgment. I tried to go down south and compete with the guys that are normally offshore fishermen, and I'm not one. And finally said I gave up on it and went back to what I like to do and caught three three-pounders and three casts and ran out of time. Well, okay. So, so listen. I said, hey, dumb dumb. So, Kevin, what's the lesson of that? Don't second guess yourself. Don't second and fish your strengths. Stick with your plan. Fish your strengths, right? You had there, a game so. plan, I'm sure. Oh, I did. Yeah. And I went with it and I caught fish, but they were all shorts. First thing that morning, because I'd been on a crankbait bite first thing in the morning when they'd had all that bait pushed back and catching some good ones. And uh it didn't happen. I was like, Well, I gotta go south if I'm gonna compete. I went south and caught one measly 12 incher and said the heck with it went back up to river forks and put a jig in my hand and skipped under a dock 
three different times and caught three that were pushing three and a half pounds. The jig bite is on right now on there. Mm -hmm. I can't believe you didn't throw a jig all day. It is on. The jig bite is on, guys, right now <laughs> on there. That that winning that winning bag, uh, three of the five fish weighed in were caught on a jig. And that included now the seven and a half pound largemouth, I don't think was caught on a jig. Williams anyway. is giving you a little love after he threw you under the bus. Who is that? He's, I love you, Farmer. He, he, he's Listen, an ABA guy. He I hangs love him out too. with Michael Kenny a lot. I love him too and all that. So uh, one of these days, I'm going to get him to yum-yum a little bit. You Ooh. guys know what I'm talking about right there. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. Kevin Thornton, do you yum-yum? Yes. <laughs> Tim McGuire. Absolutely. That's right. Look at me. The world would be a better place if everybody yum yummed a right. little bit. So the guys in the guys in the gallery know what that is tonight. And if you want to know they're, what they're sitting back is, behind Farmer there, so down here. you have to be here before the show, and I will explain to you what that is. So anyway, but <laughs> listen, uh, have you guys heard of the Nick Her Bait by Barkley? N i c k h e r the Nick Her Bait by Barkley. Not. I have not heard that, but so you tell us what it is in the comments. I'd love to know. Uh, what the Nick Herb bait is. Um, yeah, right there. Nick Herb bait by Barkley. I've never heard of it, Jack. So kind of tell us what it is a is little bit. Is that Berkeley or Barkley? It may be Berkeley. Yeah, I'm thinking Berkeley. Yeah. He still never he told me know. what the untold record of Lanier was. Yeah, he hadn't explained that yet. Yeah, I still need to know what record I was trying to break uh, right there. So Carter's levels fluctuate a lot too. Sometimes put on a hump uh, is a very viable for them versus off the bank where their beds may be out of water the next day. Uh, especially down in that lower lake. I ain't never figured out I how. think the ones out there on the hump, nobody looks for them or they either don't, they don't know get, they're there. They don't get Those molested. are overlooked fish. They don't get molested. No, they do not. Well, just yeah, because everybody's beating the banks and stuff like that. They're so. all back in a cut looking for them on a the flat. Yeah. See, I think that's like Alatuna's problem, them dropping the water like they do when they start to move up. They yeah. Start to fill it. Well, I mean, it's what now? Oh, what is it, Tim? Lee. It's come up. To five feet below pool, full pool so now. It is coming up. Oh, it rain. came up like it, six feet. Is that because yeah. of the rain? Yeah, oh, it yeah. came up like six feet, and now they're going to yank the bottom out of it again. They're going to draw it down. Yeah, oh, yeah, when it gets spawn time, they'll move the lake up, and then the fish will start moving, and, and the lake goes it. back out from under them. So they kind of, regardless of water temperature, it's like their habitat's changing on them all the time. They're going to drop. They're going to drop it back down. There ain't no way they're going to let it stay up five no, feet below. Too much winter right left. Now. Too much too rain much, possibly. We don't even really. Into all the rainy season, yet. yeah. And I've always yeah. wondered too, on Carter's Reg Lake, one day that thing, when they pump it into it, that thing could be like what 800,000 acres. And then the next day, when they suck it back up into Carter's, it's 200 or whatever. Where do those fish spawn? How that mess because that water moves weekly. It, what does a it, fish do? It sure hurts a largemouth bite on Alatina to spawn, but spots aren't too bad because, like I said, they're gonna yeah, spawn anywhere. Yeah, they'll find somewhere to go. I, I, I found I found spots spawning on the uh, spillways of dams. Yeah, I mean, I know I can believe that. And I've caught some dang monster spots <laughs> doing that. Too. Oh, absolutely. So Collins is going to send Rachel back up there. Whoa! Oh Lord, that's another that's another story right there. I, I, I'm not I sure if Danny can survive another assault like that. I mean, you know, she, she straightened him she out. She can't go eat her Chinese food now or Japanese <laughs> food because they serve yum yum sauce. Not my problem. Blame Sal Pinto right there. We, we told you it's Sal's fault. Uh, so I'm uh, put up pull up Titus's Titus Williams comment right there. I'm a new guy in the tournaments and I'm making some progress in my bag. Had truck problems last week. Couldn't bring the boat. Oh, so he's he's up on Carter's. He was a guy talking about Carter's and no. all that up there. So yeah. No, he he was with us. Oh, with y'all ABA. That's yeah, the ABA he fishes guy. the ABA. Um, okay. He, I think he he ended up drawing uh, Michael Kenny out. Oh, bless your heart. And they went fishing. Bless and, your heart, um, Michael. Hey, Titus is a good guy. Yeah. He know he knows his grass lakes. He's a grass guy. He from Chickamauga, stuff Ooh. like that. Ah, man, I tell you, one time I went to Chickamauga and we were supposed to be throwing frogs. And he loves that flutter spoon. He talks about that flutter spoon. That flutter spoon. You like the flutter spoon? A couple of comments from Barday and Stacy Blanton and all the fish your fish. Don't fish what others are doing. That's that's always good advice. But you know, it is it's kind of one of the things that people talk about. Like I can't compete unless I go out there. And that was your mindset. Like you wanted to try it. I I've seen the weights that continually come out of Lanier 
and everybody talks about the, the timber bite, the timber bite, the timber bite. Well, me working like I do, I don't get a chance to go out there and learn it. So I took the opportunity to go. I've got some places that usually hold fish in the ditches. So I went, maybe they're out in the timber. So I went and tried it. Didn't work. Just happened to not be my day that day. I ain't going to say, I mean. Just smile about it. Though. Give me a smile. Give me a smile. There you, there go. you go. Give <laughs> me a smile. you too hard on yourself right there. So uh, pull up Ron Swinford's comment. This is actually pretty cool. Now, now, listen, let's preface this by saying Rocky Mountain is a different breed of lakes. Okay. Um, the biggest gizzard shad I've ever seen live in Rocky Mountain. Yep. And those bass just gorge themselves on it. That's why it's the trophy lake that it is. But um, a few years ago, Hook and Look did a show at Car- – no, that was at Carter's. Mm-hmm. I thought, okay, I saw Rocky Mountain Carmen. Excuse me, pull up Ron's. Yeah, Vern, Vern had the comment. Rocky Mountain is a crazy Rocky. breed. Them bass don't act right. Yeah, that's why I got him and Ron's comment mixed up. Yeah. And they are, Vern. That, that lake is just – all three of those lakes, which I throw, consider the other lake basically one big lake. Yeah. The road in between. If you go to Rocky, throw everything out the window, go over there that day, see what the water looks like, and start from scratch, and you'll catch fish. If you go over there with anything on your mind thinking that they're going to eat it, you're going to have a bad day. Yeah, it, you got to play that day right there. But right above him, uh, a few years ago, Hook and Look did a show at Carter's Film Fish 30 feet deep spawning on the dam in late May or early June. Hmm. 30 feet deep. I said 15 to 30. You did say that. You did that. But that's but at Carter's 30 feet is like five feet at Lake Lanier. I mean, that's a 400 foot lake, ain't it? I mean, well, it's we, crazy. We tend to four, think I think 40 feet is deep, and it's really not. Oh, not, I know. Not up here. It's not. Most guys have 20 foot bass boats, just add 10 foot to it. There's yeah. 30 feet. I know feet. it, but when your mind thinks down, yep. it seems like that's forever. Yeah, today. 40 foot seems like a lot, but like Jonathan said, I mean, it's just two two boat lengths. It a, is. Tru- a truck and a trailer combined. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're right. it, yeah. When you're looking at it horizontally, it don't seem like much, but vertically, it seems like you're halfway to China. Well, when you're doing I that. also, now with forward facing sonar, you can see how far you can cast. Yeah. Well, you're bombing a hundred and forty feet out there, hundred and fifty feet. Yeah. You're like, well, that ain't nothing. But it seems like, but yeah. it, back in the day, it seemed like forever and all that. So, uh, let's see. I've been catching monster on that flutter spoon in twenty feet of water. So, I, I, listen, I don't do that. Uh, Hickory Flat, what's up, Drew? Pull his comment up right there. He's got a little bit of a question on the end of that. The jig bite to me seems to be good when the water level is changing. Can it be it gets the crawfish moving more? That's a good, that's that's a good thought. So, all of you guys, y'all, you guys that know how to fish, I don't. Y'all tell me your answer on that. I'll just go back to my experience. Um, we'll go back to Carter's Lake. Carter's Lake, the last few years, has flooded. I mean, eight, nine, ten feet out of its banks. Um, I think I put in one time on Carter's where the actual dam ramp was completely underwater and I put in on the parking lot. <laughs> but you, Man, the these things happen. <laughs> but you can. Oh, don't worry about that flood. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Right. It'll be all right. But you could literally go to the pine stumps of the pine trees standing up there and flip a black and blue jig in Yoo-Hoo water, catching four and a half, five pound spots every stump, every tree. They'd pushed up because the water came up, and they were look foraging that by, uh, that shoreline looking for new food, nutrients. Too. Yeah, and they're just oh god, there just, they're out there roaming around. I mean, it's like trash cans and yeah, been tables and whatever yeah. they can find. Ain't that crazy though? How they'll do that? Like, so it is. Yeah, that's like with Altoona, with Altoona coming up like it has six foot. I I would be lying to you if I wouldn't have been out there crashing the bank today with some kind of moving bait or a jig looking for those fish that had nosed up trying to find with the water coming up with the water coming up. Now it being a cold rain, they Still, may not be up there a as good Sunday much. Day, though. Yeah, but. As far as they're they're still going to feed fish push up looking for stuff. Yeah, I mean I, I find it pretty interesting like that. Uh, got a creek might try the football jig. Hey, listen, you can't catch fish if you're not in the water, so definitely get out there and throw it. Uh, oh, Michael Geiger, did we answer the question? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. That makes me feel better. First of all, Michael, congratulations to you and Randy on uh, your tournament win in the electric series. That was uh, absolutely. There were some amazing weights in that. 
So 2348, and people were like just going crazy because they said electric boats. Well, these guys are hammers. They can fish it. Pull that up. It was caught on a true grit jig in five feet of water. <laughs> I did not know what that color. Set. I know Ooh. what color I tied it. <laughs> uh, what color? I don't know if Michael and them want me to tell it. I'll tell you guys. What, was it, well, I'll just say it, it. Was it one of our normal colors? Yes. Was that's it a, a fair selling, question? Was it a high selling color? Yes. Peanut butter and jelly. I know which I one. I know it. which one it is. I can't say it, but it's a very good Lake Lanier jig. Anyway, though, I, <laughs> I know, I, I but listen, I did not know that is. the largemouth came on a jig, so that's impressive. But twenty three forty eight is a hell of a damn result in a tournament. Mm -hmm. Twenty two pounds took second. I always mean, that I always feel for that guy that comes in, him and his partner, and it happens in the big boat tournaments and all that. They come in, they got twenty two pounds, and they're like, guys, we're sitting good. You weigh it, you might be in first place, and here comes some guy with 23 pounds and beats you out. This happens in the Scott Barnes tournaments all the time. I, I watch know, their weights. I know it, but it anyway, always happens. Geiger, y'all had, had hey, that was listen, I, that was impressive, dude. Absolutely impressive. We didn't answer the question though about the guy asking about crawfish, whether they go deep, if it's a water drops, or if it stands shallow. Oh, Drew's question. Drew's no. question. They have to. I mean, if the water drops, they're going to move out deeper, and if it they comes back to. up, they're going to move back up. It makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. You got to yeah, remember they're... that rain that comes brings a lot of nutrients, whether it's coming off the rocks or coming out of the back of a creek, wherever. And those fish, bay fish, are going to move up to get the nutrients. Yeah, the bass are going to follow. And a crawfish, they got to feed on something. Like that. So that makes sense. Something well, else with crawfish. If we... they get up there and start eating different stuff, they're going to change color. Mm-hmm. They start eating on that dead, those dead leaves and everything. Yeah. They start turning dark. Yeah. So that's yeah. it. So that's what Shannon color. Borman always said that, you know, the crayfish, you can almost tell the color by their diet. Yep. And even the ones that are, are really dark, it, it is all about their diet. And it, sometimes when they bury, that's when they get, sometimes they'll get a little more of that red in them because of the clay. They'll absorb, it in, they'll absorb it in their exocell, uh, exo, yeah, exo, exoskeleton. Exoskeleton. Right? Sounded good. It sounded right. So something like that. Uh, sure. No, it was not the linear smoke. And um, people, farmer, would you be drag? Oh, also, this is from Michael Temples. <laughs> he's, he's, listen, he, he wants to know. No, he's but, asked it three times. Yeah, but no, listen, right, so listen up. <laughs> But he also said when you made the comment, I bombed it out 140 feet. He goes, I don't even have enough line to bomb it out. <laughs> and, I, and listen, every time you guys talk about, yeah, I made that 200 foot cast, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm doing good to get it out there 65 feet. You know, so a no forward facing sonar with a little graph on it mm -hmm. will let you know what your limitations are. Yeah, and every time like, I throw out and it, it says, probably, <laughs> like most men, are thinking that it's more than what they got. Listen, that's been the story of my life. <laughs> Ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I've been lying to her for 30 years. Right there. She knows the truth, though. Uh, Farmer, would you be dragging that jig or popping it? I'm dragging it right I now. I drag jigs drag right now. Everything Most, all right, I, another thing that killed me, and I have yet to get used to it with the forward facing sonar, I have sped up since I've got it. Right. Yeah, I, I did too. As most I people have do. I sped up, and it killed me Saturday because then I turned right back around and start. I turned it off. And started doing what I was doing before that. Started catching fish again. I was fishing too fast. So, Jonathan, are you like are you, you talking about popping or dragging? Are you like just sweeping it? Yes. Slowly. I'm just. Go, I'm literally going. Then let the front. it soak, and then I'm letting it hit the more. bottom, and I'm pulling my rod to the side, and I'm counting exactly. rocks with it as it dances across, and then I'll kill it. Let it sit there for ten seconds, fifteen seconds, then I'll pull again. But if I hit something. I'm going to give something away. I don't Come on, get some juice. Here comes some sugar-free juice or sugar, sugar juice. Free. We want the sugar juice. If I hit something, the first thing I do, if, if it's different, I'm bumping along the bottom, it feels chunky, 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 and then it just stops. Something bigger is right there. There's usually going to be a fish right there. Right, hiding behind kill that it, rock. Kill it. Let the skirt do its thing. If you can't get them to bite when it's uh, dead, dead sticking it, pick your rod tip up to where you feel tension in your line. And tip the bottom of your rod, just to get some vibration, and make that thing quiver down there, like this. And you'll usually just go thunk. There you go, dropping yeah. another tip right oh, there. Yeah, I've got more bites sweeping it yeah. like that than I have ever hopping. Dude, it that was swimming. shaky head too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, shaky, shaky head's head, the same thing. Definitely. I mean, you, you oh, yeah. you're dragging that shaky head, and you hit something. Yeah, it's different. Something on the bottom's different, which usually has a fish on it, and. 
Look at that Trump shirt in the background right there. Yeah. We got we got us a registered Republican back there. Look for at sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, listen, there's a lot of problems with the docks on Alatoona. I think there's you know on several pages you can see where uh, guys have been trying to get the core to uh, address the situation with the docks on Alatoona. Uh, unfortunately, like Lanier, we're kind of blessed that even when the water's down, we still have a lot of big docks that you can get on, but they're few and far between on Alatoona. So there is a petition being signed and and i don't know all the ins and outs of everything but i've heard there's been some um people in the government now taking a look at the situation and all that but if you could sign that petition go online and hit that put your name on it i signed it to help these guys out at alatoona you fish alatoona a little bit more so you I'm might can tell me petition we're, we're Bard, they put if you don't mind in the comment, yeah, put the address um, up for sure. that or put a put, link, put, put, put a link we, on the yeah, Fish North Georgia page. So. Yeah, yeah, put a link somewhere because that is very important. And also, the Corps of Engineers is responsible, even if it's a county dock in a county park, they still have to get permission and kind of work with the Corps of Engineers as to what they can do, how far they can extend it, and all of that. So, you've got two different kind of systems that have to get cohesive sometimes to get that dock moved gatewood so. recently got a new dock didn't they yeah they extended gatewood it, extended it they gatewood extended has it a brand out new the water. water um galts needs one blockhouse needs victoria one. one victoria victoria's needs moved because so, when when they drop the lake they shut the ramp down. well they shut the ramps down and that tournament dock it's is dry. out of the water it's dry and, I and did, most tournaments go on this and, time of year. And I did see it on some somebody's post. So, again, Barday, if you don't mind, put that in the comment section so we can share it here, and then we'll post it on the Fist of Georgia page. Um, but also, too, you got to think about disabled anglers that want to get in a boat and all that, being able to have access. So that's actually – I mean, that's the only way that you – take somebody in a wheelchair that wants to go fishing. Those docks are by far the easiest – way for them to have access to the boat unless they're putting the boat before somebody backs it down or something like that so there is there's other things to think about other than it's just inconvenient for us that can have the you know we have the mobility to do that but somebody somebody that's disabled they have no no recourse to that there's nothing they can no, do they so don't. you guys Good in the point. government if you're watching you better get your mm -hmm. ass in gear on that Good point dane says the uh, new dock is uh Still there at Gatewood. I hadn't been by there. I don't know. Oh, the, old up, dock, the old dock's still there, yeah. Is the old dock's still there? Well, that's, it's, it's, that's it's, even better. It's, it's, it's pretty much dry, but... Well, I'm sure it's sitting on Well, no, there. I'm sorry. The lake come up. It's five foot below the pool. So the old <laughs> dock's out in the water yeah, right like, yeah. But it's still a situation that needs to be addressed because we hear about it every single year. Yeah. They've been dealing with that on Alatoona for a long time. Now, in the comment section, Philip Hutchinson has said several comments about the crawfish. You guys definitely go check that out because it's... He's got some stuff about crawfish come up and they get what they can eat on the rocks, trying to scrape any of the vegetation. Uh, you don't go way too far up like that. So, well, this thing's uh, moving right fast. there. It is moving fast. We got a lot of comments. Yeah. So, crawfish target the stuff they can scrape off things such as rocks and sticks. That's what they're eating right there. There we go. Yeah. And then um, he also says the Chattahoochee crawfish is an endangered species and uh, it's easy to ID due, due to the orange tipped claws. And other body parts right there. So that's an interesting <laughs> so, little fact right there. Does the anyone know how many the, species uh, the the fish, the, well, of crawfish <laughs> are in Georgia it, waters? We can't, yeah, we can't help it if the fish are chewing on it right, right. there. Uh, Michael Geiger also had a comment, and this is it's talking about how good Lanier is uh, in that it's down a couple. Uh, right there. I think the most impressive thing about Saturday, and again, this is Ball Ridge Marina area of Lake Lanier, wow. is that they had over mm -hmm. seven spots weighing over five pounds weighed in oh they're getting big oh listen right now if you want to go catch a big girl this month the next month i think is prime time i'm so afraid lanier is about to take a dip south uh, as what, good as it's fishing you, you think know, when when does it when does it here's the thing I, we talked when does the size of the fish start to i talked about that today with a guy take a turn for the it, worst it might have been it might have been you i can't remember i talked to somebody you, about that we we're talking might have been with largemouth lakes, I think you get a lot more of the ups and downs and everything. But I don't think anybody's ever really watched a spot. I was going to say, you, are you basing this on past history of what good lakes have done and mm -hmm. gone down, mm -hmm. and then three, four, or five years start to come back up again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm like you, Dan. I don't know what the spots will do, how see, it affects them. See, I'm I'm thinking, large, different creatures. But I'm a I'm a largemouth 
yeah. uh, heart. So I'm thinking largemouth lakes that I am go up here and peak, and you're like, this thing can't ever go bad. And then two years down the road, yeah. you can't you can't squeak out eight pounds. Right. But I'm wondering if if the spotted bass, just by its nature, because they'll out compete. If it gets to that way, they'll out compete the largemouth. Mm -hmm. Largemouth are lazy, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm just curious if that'll ever happen on a spotted bass lake. As long as the bait's there, I I, I don't know. I don't know because the, the we keep and now I do know that uh, I've heard comments saying that right before a lake goes down, you have your biggest weights, mm -hmm. and then the lake crashes. I've heard that from people in the past, so I'm I'm really curious as to that. But it'd be interesting to see how it is with a spotted bass lake because Lane Lake Lanier, even though it's got great large mouth in it, it's a spotted bass lake. So I, I'd be interested to watch yes. it over the next few years like that. Uh, J.P. Vern, guys, for the Alatuna uh, ramp situation, it's been posted on the uh, FNG Facebook page, and I will make sure that I get it over to the uh, group page right there. Uh, Way to go, Jason. There you go. So appreciate you guys utilizing our social media. We'll get that out there like that. So one more question before we do have the question of the week. Joshua Murphy wants to know, are we talking about Reservoirs 2? Um and I, I don't know if you're talking about the 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 tactics that we're using or if you're talking about the – you know, we were talking about bass fishing going up and down. I would say if you're talking about tactics, uh, Latham Reservoir that is, to me, fish is exactly like a mini Lake Lanier because it's got spots and largemouth. It's deep, and it's got the blueback heron and a big population of threadfin in there. So anything that works on Lake Lanier right now, you can go over to Latham and replicate it. You just can't. If you're a drop shot guy, that bites, that bites there. If you want to beat the banks, it's there. Uh, Latham is a different breed. Now, I don't know about the rest of the reservoirs like Hickory Log because it just stinks anyway, uh, but it is what it is. So in Rocky Mountain, Tim, you fish Rocky Mountain a lot. How about right now with all this pre-spawn talk? Does that sound kind of like similar stuff you're seeing, or in, similar? You know? But but like those fish, they don't they don't do the same as your normal lakes. They're they're always kind of behind. It seems to me. Um, let's get back to talking. Let's get back to talking about pre-spawn bass fishing. Um, what do you do, Jonathan, in getting prepped from this time on? As far as your mindset, you fish tournaments. And uh, with the ABA and all that, you know, your mindset on going in, the changes that the fish are going to be doing, what are you starting to look for and how does that affect your approach? I look for – the first thing I look for is steady warm days. Yeah. We don't We don't have a week of brutal cold like we got, then it's going to be 60, then it's going to drop back down into the 30s. I look for two to three weeks to be high 62 to – high to 67 that tells me all right we're getting well that's past sorry that's when it's that's when it's good what i'm really looking for is uh the uh daytime start getting longer mm -hmm. when the daytime starts getting longer that's when i first start looking for them fish to push i think push it has back. a bigger effect so, on them than anything do you, that was where i was getting to go so do you think it's kind of almost like deer with the rut a lot of people old timers used to think it was the weather but now scientists have kind of proven it's the uh, photo periodism or whatever the length right. of days. Mm -hmm. so you think fish have this built-in bass have this built-in thing saying okay the days are getting longer the longer the sun's up the warmer the yeah. water gets you got more sun you do you do but is it the warming of the water or is it the length of the day combination of both yeah exactly okay well all right what pulls them out like right right now yeah i avo avoid mud or cold muddy water like the plague i'm saying you muddy water you who yeah you avoid it like the plague why is that i mean the fish just are just dormant in it they're going to try to find the warmest water they can yeah yeah and cold muddy water your cold muddy water is usually two to four degrees colder than your stable water that hasn't been blown out from rains okay but once it stabilizes muddy water warms up faster than clear water does so once now it stabilizes all oh, the particles the mud particles, particles that the holds heat, heat. Yeah. yeah so pre-spawn that's why i hunt out dirty water because you're starting to get the warmer temps. 
Uh, so right now you avoid it. I avoid it, it like the plague right, right now. now. But as the days go on, you're going to start looking for more of that kind yeah, of water. Well, after that cold rain we had, what was it? Um, that rain that come in. Blew, Tuesday. Uh, yeah. That's blew right. out Lanier, the north end. I mean, turned it to you who has turned Altoona from Kellogg up to just chocolate milk. Right. That was a cold, cold rain. That water temp dropped down almost to the 30s or the 40s or low 40s. Really got that cold. It got that cold. And you go down the lake where it cleared up a little bit and it was 46, 47. So you had five degrees difference. It had shut those fish up in the river down mm -hmm. in this dirty water. That movie water's colder too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Real quick, uh, first Robert Robleski, Jonathan Farmers are hammered. <laughs> I had to pull that one yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. Listen, but don't Robert, blow, don't blow smoke up but, my hind end. <laughs> but listen, Robert's jumping back into the MPFL, and their season's getting ready to kick off. So, Rob, you know we love you down here at FNG, and so we're gonna good be watching. luck to you. And yeah, we're gonna be watching you and Will and all the guys there uh, jumping that. So, uh, looking forward to seeing that. Um, there was also a comment uh, for somebody that doesn't have Facebook, and this is a Stephen Barday. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Barday. Now that I see it, you can quit talking now. He don't want to want you giving up too much of that sugar juice, not the sugar free stuff. But also Barday, while you're at it, I uh, got a fella on here that doesn't have Facebook. So if you guys can uh, tell him where to find that out, I think JP Vern outside mentioned it too. Okay, I just want to make sure if someone doesn't have Facebook, how they can find the petition. So as long as we got that, it was 41 degrees Saturday morning. And so, wow, that is really, really cold. Um, yeah, right there, Michael Temples. Pull up right above that. <laughs> Thanks for telling me that. I ain't going in Gainesville High Cove anytime <laughs> soon. Then. Had a sewage spill. Well, they got the cramp pipe that goes right over, or comes out of the bank, goes right over the water. And it spilled? I'm guessing it burst. Wow. <laughs> Evidently so. I bet them crawfish are out there just having a the time of their life, though. It's yeah. a buffet, man. Uh, <laughs> we get a bunch of cold, muddy water in the early spring. Pull that back up real quick. Say, what if that's the only thing I can fish? Just fish shallow or change color? Okay, Jekyll Productions, appreciate you jumping in tonight with that comment right there, bud. Uh, okay, so right now, if somebody's lake or body of water is muddy, what are their options? North-facing pockets. North facing pockets. It's going to warm up faster than any part of the lake. And docks too. No, oh, your black floats. Docks, yeah. yeah. Black, black okay. floats. If all right, I know everybody's pretty much everybody's got a uh, temperature on their graphs. Right. All right. If you go put your trolling motor straight up against a black float and let it read, it'll climb up a degree and a half, two degrees. Really? That black float holds so much heat, heat. and radiates. That those fish will actually, and well, I, it's me, like a you went, yeah. me and you went to Notley right after a brutal cold rain. It was. And it blew Notley out. It did. And we fished, weren't catching anything, and then we started going to docks. They were there. And they had pulled up, up under them floats sunning. They did. They did that on a wooden dock, too, because of the oh, structure. Yeah. When it's muddy, they want to get, they want to be up against something. It was, it was really weird because that's the first time I'd ever been on Notley. And we tried the river first. It was muddy. You did mm -hmm. catch one or two on a crankbait, I think. Yeah, but it was, it was, it, but it was, was not what you wanted. No. And we went back down and it was still muddy as I'll get out when we went back down. But we pulled in, we pulled into one of my favorite places. And I'll be darned if I didn't look under there. He and I did. said, look, there's a four pounder sitting under that <laughs> float. Sitting there. Sitting there. And then I handed him my rod and he threw at it. It ate and he lost it. Yeah. That was the, that <laughs> well. <laughs> Okay, so that was the infamous. We're gonna we're gonna explain that again. That was the infamous upside down spin reel uh, incident oh, on Lottery. Yeah. So listen. So I tried to skip. I had a bait caster, and I'm terrible at skipping. So I tried to skip under this dock to that fish, and it blew. I blew my bait caster out, and Jonathan threw me an open face. I just opened the bail up and I chunked it up under there, set the bail, watched the fish, and then it, it took. I set the hook, and then I looked, and his reels on the left hand. I cannot reel with my left hand. Dude, I was panicking. I turned that joker upside down and started reeling like this, and I fought it, and I fought it, and it got off. Jonathan's sitting up on the front of the boat, and I looked at him. I said, don't you ever tell a soul. They remember, that's what I said. I just sat down at the He's, bottom of the boat and just did this. I said, don't you tell a soul like that. But I cannot. My brain is wired different than most people. 
my left hand, I write with it, I throw with it, I pull a bow back with my left hand. I cannot reel a fishing reel with my left hand. I do everything, bait caster, spin reel, everything with my right hand. It just does not translate to my brain. I know you're looking at me like I'm crazy. So no, I, I'm not. Listen, I did the card. <laughs> he <show>. is too. <laughs> listen, <laughs> look at him. He is. His ass is lying. But I, listen, I turn that joker upside down. I look like somebody ain't never fished for their oh, life, and I'm really freaking I'm good. Just thinking, it, I'm just it thinking. It was a big it fish. A good one. I'm was, just thinking anybody that goes fishing with you needs to wear a GoPro. They do. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> There's absolutely. a lot of stuff that there needs to be a GoPro on. There. Oh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a, just a walking comedy show in a boat. But it wasn't a two pound fish. Was no, it? it was. It was. It was that. I would say girls. at the smallest, it was four and a half pounds. Yeah, and that was in muddy water. So mm. it was. And it was a weightless wacky rig, wasn't it? Mm. And I just perfect. Well, the way they were set up under the docks, I mean, you could you could put anything in front of their face, they were going to follow it. But the weightless, uh, the wacky, you put it in front of it, just they nose down on it and just suck it in. Well, we were catching one right after another off we would we go down a line of docks well you would catch eight or nine off that line of docks i literally crank the motor go back to the start and go back down it again and catch eight or nine off the docks they were just stacked under them well he broke i think you broke your wacky off your rod yes and i was like there's a big one here and, and I, I threw I, it yeah because i could just see it silhouette underneath that dock and under or muddy water and i was like ah eh, four four and a half pounds here he threw it up there and when that mouth opened up it was bigger than four and a half pounds it was it was a nice was dude a i'm reeling like a daggum i don't i got words that i could say that would get me banned right now it, it <laughs> now was, i'm looking at you now you're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a grown one you do what you got to do when you got to do what you got to do learn to reel left hand i know it and <laughs> since then since then i have gotten to where i can reel i have forced myself to try to do it but at the time, I just could not do it, and so. But I did. Jonathan and I remained friends, which says he's a good, loyal friend because he seen me do the cardinal sin, and he didn't. He didn't. Make and he me said a, he'd never tell a soul until you got on a podcast. Well, you now know, everybody I knows. I said it that way. I can, you know, I get it out. I there. didn't tell a soul. I came out of the closet. I came out of the Whoa. closet. I reeled the spinning reel upside down, boys. All right, there you go. Yeah, it happened. can be done. It can. Well, the cardinal, I did the cardinal sin of fishing. Yeah. I did it in uh, Port St. Joe, too, on the I Real saw. American Road Trip. I saw. His reel was rusted. I couldn't get the thing to switch over. I tried my best. So, anyway. <laughs> hey, listen. Ain't no shame in my game. Heck no. We talked about wearing thongs before the show. Bar day, you know how to catch them anywhere you go. So, you don't need to be to teach listen, you anything. like that. Uh, <laughs> um, we might do that. Dark bottom bays and rocky cover with crankbaits and spinnerbaits do well. Uh, during times like that early in the spring, they like a bright crankbait in the mud. So he did ask about colors. I was yeah. going to say he was asking about thick, muddy water, thick, and we gave water. him everything, but you're going to have to choose your colors wisely for them to be able to see it or feel it in that water one way or the other. Is it more about the color or is it more about the bait and the vibration? You look like you got a pee. You want no, to answer that. So. Uh, be, he, let's go drop some. Pre spawn. He's I'm not wanting to tell this is what it is. Yeah. I'm going to have one of two colors tied on. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm going to guess one. Okay. Ooh. It's going to be something like a DT6 and that demon. Mm. DT8 and DT8 demon. DT8 and demon. Mm. The DT8 and demon, because uh. the DT8 is the same size as the six, but you get two more feet out of it. Okay, so I nailed but that one. If you if you get your rod zing right, you can get a DT8 to 10 foot. Right. And the other one is I am, I'm actually fishing a square bill. A square mm -hmm. bill, like a fritz side kind of bait, or you know, I'm a big or all right. Uh, Dane, Dane <laughs> is Dane is going to kill me yeah, when you, I say this. Hey, Dane signed because, off a while ago. He said good night and everything. So because, lay it out. I, I, he won't no, know it for a while. No evidence. I showed him, and it's it's a well known bait, but not many people throw it this time of year. It's a, it's the react. No, it's the river to sea biggie. Okay. I thought you was it's gonna say a bag on it. Yeah, it it's it's about it's it, it's about almost three inches, but it's got a really hard knock in it. <laughs> Boy, damn. Jordan Cooper, I was an avid listener until I heard this sorcery. Yeah. He's talking about me reeling, I think, upside down. <laughs> I get it, dog. I get it one hundred percent. So it was so say that bait again. It's the river to sea biggie. 
Okay. I was just going to say a whopper plopper. But hell I think, no, it's not a whopper Thank you. Plopper. I'm glad. You notice how Danny got him to say that twice. Y'all took notes, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. I get it uh, out. The river to see Biggie in their cold-blooded color. Cold-blooded color right there. It is. It's a <laughs> red. Jericho, it's, he's like, Jericho. dang it, yeah. farmer. Yeah. Yeah. Dang it. <laughs> dang it is a nice way of what he's really thinking. Yeah. Okay, now say it one more time. It was cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. It is a dark red, but it is a translucent bait. Okay. Translucent? It's translucent. I was getting ready to say. Muddy water? Muddy water. He's got a tra but has it got rattles? Mm, it's got a it's got one knocker. It's got a big knocker in mm. it. That's me. That's my nickname. Well, mm. big knocker. All right. <laughs> yeah, man, I, like, I, like, I like to make you as uncomfortable as I can. The reason, <laughs> look at him grinning, though. <laughs> he does, because you know what he's saying? He's like, I know better. The reason I'm throwing better. a translucent. <laughs> the reason I'm throwing translucent. Why? A square bill's got so much thump and action to it as it comes through the water. Yeah. They're they're hitting at the uh the vibration. They're not hitting the bait. I'm just throwing a shade of red in there so they think, oh, there comes a crawfish through here. Here comes something through here. I gotta right. attack it. Um, what was it? Uh two years ago when we were up on Notley and I ended up having a co angler with me. And I had sixteen pounds and he had fifteen pounds literally halfway through the day and i'd caught like 20 to his one i go here and i throw the square bill back to him the first cast he catches a 560 something with it is when the water's dirty and warming if you can find dirty water that's two to three degrees warmer than the surrounding water all those fish are going to be right there Crash to the bank. Okay, there you go. Another tip. Probably going to run out of. Huh? Probably going to run out of that bait now. Is that yeah, what? It's, it's a river to river sea. To river to river sea. To river sea. To sea. Right. Sorry. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Dane, Dane's going to be lighting his phone up tomorrow when he catches yeah. wind. I can't yeah. believe Jonathan, you told him that. That is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm getting. I'm getting. I, I haven't. Can't. I haven't released it yet, but I'm getting out of tournament fishing for the surveillance foreseeable future until my kids get grown so. yeah so yes yeah, so like that yeah. <laughs> i'm not you worried I, about it <laughs> you and i have had that conversation so hey listen you're not the only person ever i do that scratch fishing wants to know you when you said north facing mm -hmm. okay so he's got a question yeah, mark. we need north clarification facing. on bank that, is on the south side with the north to your back or what what's your orientation to a north facing bank you're fishing the north face all right so the, hey, if you if you're sitting there facing straight north okay mm -hmm. that bank straight in front Go of to you. the bank yeah the the South when the sun comes up right now, it's gonna it's gonna be at your back. Yeah, sun's gonna be to your back. It, the, what is it? It comes up in the southeast right now. It's a little off. It ain't as high as like during the summer. Yeah, and yeah, just straight straight out north, north, straight north. A that bank, bank. wherever the most sun is shining, it's yeah. gonna shine there the longest of the and, day. Well, you'll see, you'll see it first thing in the morning too. As the sun comes up, it's gonna be your first banks that get hit. Yeah. As soon as the sun starts topping the trees, it's going to be the first banks that get hit. Okay. Makes because sense. they're going to be in the sun all day long. So they're going to be a degree or two warmer than, than mm -hmm. your south stuff. Uh, studio and lighting looks great. Happy New Year, bros. Same to you. Uh, Is that background not off the chain? Look at that. Look it, at it's that. amazing. Josh did a lot of work on that. So there is mood lighting. We're actually throwing a rave here after the uh, show. So if you guys want to get in some of that techno music and <laughs> Bring your ecstasy and we'll come on up here. We're going to party, boys, like that. I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see. Surf Dad also had a question. When do you think the respawn will start on Alatuna this year? Second week, February ish. So, kind of, I mean, that's kind of like getting what we've been talking about. It's getting there, right? Yeah. 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 We, are you laughing? Nah, I was laughing. Yeah. I'd give you just enough to hang yourself. That's usually what I do. <laughs> oh, like that. Also, want, uh, Michael, Tim, well, I, we've been talking about that, Surf Dad. So, anytime between now, once we get. You said kind of when we get some some uh, some full days of sun as the days get longer we get. Some well, I look I look um, with this week coming up. I actually look for a lot of fish to push shallow because we're going to have what four days of straight rain. Yeah, and the highs of the sixties. Maxton Creeks rain. are going to be five to nine degrees warmer than yeah. the main lake is. So yeah, it's going to be like we talked about rain earlier. Rain. They're going to move up a little bit, and then all of a sudden everything changes. They're going to come back. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a constant. I, I, look for, I look for your back, your your morning bite in the back of the creeks to look better and in the than anything. If it turns cold again. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, that's just Georgia right here in the, in the winter. Uh, Michael Temple's want to know what speed really you throw on your cranks on. 
Um, I actually reel mine on pretty fast stuff. Uh, six, eight to one, seven, three, or seven, one to one, seven, three, mm -hmm. because you can always slow down. Yeah. And always speed up. They're like most guys deep crank with a, a five, four or something like that. You're just sitting there just, and you're trying to speed up as fast as you can go. And most you can speed up is what the gear, uh, gear ratio does, or just a little bit higher. I got you. I got you. I even throw my deep cranks on a, uh, seven three to one really mm -hmm. so you're a little bit faster than some guys that drop down to the five four i like that. to i like to speed crank speed crank okay that makes i sense. like to make a reaction i make I'll, I'll blow i'll blow it by that school of fish to see if i can get it fired up or if i now with forward facing sonar i can look out and see a ball of bait and there's fish under it yeah i can fire that uh crankbait out there that dies 15 18 foot and blow it through that ball of bait just as fast as I can get it, go and blow it through it, make that bait ball disperse. When I, when them fish are doing this, what, what happened? There's a bait sitting right there. Cause it's out. Cause everything went that way. And there's that one bait just sitting yeah. in solid. Yeah. It's right just there. in their face and it's an aggressive strike and it's like a reaction. They're going to hit it. Uh, speaking of square bills, that dang OG Rocco is killer. Lord, Lord. LA, yeah. LA, <laughs> loud. Any, I love that. You can always bait. count on Jeremiah. Jerem well, Jeremiah probably owns every damn bait in the world. Any of the Ots Garage lines of crankbaits are their top notch. If okay, let me ask this question: If you had to pick a, the best, what is the best crankbait company out there right now? Mm -hmm. You had to, you only get one. You only get, and I'll ask you that too, Kevin. You, you throw crankbait some, don't you? Yeah. Okay, so. And then Tim, I'll ask you that. One company to buy their crankbaits for the rest of your life. What is it? What are you buying? Who, who's going first? I know what I'm buying, only because there's only one crankbait I throw because I hate crankbaits, but I'll throw a Spro rock crawler. I like Spro. I don't like their I mean I, not that I don't like it. I don't throw their deep diving stuff, but I love a rock crawler. So that's deep that's diving stuff's good. I'd yeah. have to go with Spro. I you would go with Spro? Okay. I'm torn between Spro because Spro has such a wide spectrum of crankbaits mm -hmm. because you can go from two foot divers all the way down to 25 foot divers. They have 25 foot divers though. They're, huge. They're big. They're huge. The only other one that I think that might outdo it would be the Rapalus because of the balsa. You like the Rapalus? I You're love a balsa bait. Is it Rapala or Rapala? either that's a, that's a good question i guess because i know tomato the, tomato i know all the Rapala. yankees and alabamians say crappie and it's crappy then we have it right here in georgia it's what, rapala rapala that's why I hear is it. that the way the europeans say it i you through the rapala hey kevin don't they in in florida they <laughs> <laughs> the rapala i saw the rapala, is the rapala. No. in rapala. florida what in florida they they call uh crappy specs don't they specs mm -hmm. specs they're specs, specs. And they're Sacolay in Louisiana or right. Sacolay or something like that. So, yeah. Them French people over them Cajuns. You can't just have one bait company though. I'm sorry. I'm just saying because if you the, the five XD has its place. Yeah, but and I'm every, just, yeah, it's great. As soon as soon as summer gets here, five or six. Yeah, yeah I, it, I put a five XD or six XD, and I deep crank with it because it's got the 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 widest kick of any deep diving crank bait. Crank I get bait. It. But that wasn't my question. You only can pick one. <sighs> You only, he, I said Spro. He says Spro. Tim, what, what is your answer? Berkeley Money Badger. You like a Berkeley Money Badger? There you Ber go. Okay, Berkeley so. makes some good crank. Yeah, that too. Money Badger. You're the only one hedging over here. Right like a, a, a Money I Badger and I a like rock a, crawler. That wasn't my question. You got to pick one. Because of the spectrum, I would take Spro. Okay, all right, that's good. Just because of the spectrum, I get it. I get it. I because just, I can go from ultra shallow to deep okay it. i get it that, but that, i want to put you on the spot mm. and you hedging over there sandbagging coming up with three or four different companies <laughs> well, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. it was a well, specific say, question i said name one bait well, one, rap was one only about 20 feet deep weren't they what yeah uh, 20 footers i think is the deepest they deep. got and they got the dt series but once you get out of the dt series Look at like he's in pain right now. Well i mean he's, like he's like torn right. emotionally you, like we're gonna have to have cancel not, after the show with him in pre-spawn, you cannot not have a SR5 or an SR7 tied on from Rapala. Suspending, yeah. You I'm not, shad wrap? I, I, yeah. I know, but that wasn't the original a shad wrap. That just, but that wasn't a question. 
<laughs> hey, Danny, I think he's give up enough uh, sugar juice. His uh, sugar levels are low. That's is that what he is? That's why he's looking funny Somebody over there. The we might have bar. to get him some a candy bar. He needs a Snickers. He's got the Betty White going on right now. <laughs> Go down to Landrum right there. That looks like a question right there behind that cover. Who shot that nice buck over your right shoulder? My business partner, Josh, who's in the background over in the back, who's now beaming with a big head and pride, shot that as the crow flies probably about what do you say josh eight nine miles from here eight or nine he shot that he josh has got a horseshoe up his ass <laughs> listen that shot this it's a very nice it's a beautiful buck but that is a dawson county buck that he shot with a bow because according to josh the only way to kill anything is with a bow only men hunt with bows but uh he shot that with a bow what two years ago Two years ago. So, yeah, it's a hell. But let me tell you something. His wife won't let him hang it at the house. That's why we got it here right there. So he's a man that hunts with a bow, but his wife won't let him hang his deer at the house. So that's why it's up here at the shop. So, and thank wow. you for noticing the lovely background. It is. Don't it look good, though, that camera like that? So, yeah. So, anyway, you know, Josh shot it. It's a very, you know, it's a, it's a very beautiful buck. I encourage you to come up here to the shop and take a look at it right there. So, Surf Dad, 50 to 53 water temp. Alatuna is close to pre-spawn for me up in the creek. Just getting about that time. Um and then let's say absolutely eight five to one Tony Collum, how you doing? How, the how to hero, um, yeah. So I think we're talking that Eric Crowley. I pull my cranks with one hundred and fifty <laughs> mercury. That's <'cause laughs> was the most striper and walleye guy right there. So I get it. Uh, Danny, anyone going to be at the shop Saturday? Yes, I will be here from eight to twelve. And uh, correction, Jeremiah says I only own half the baits in the world. The best bank. Oh, the best crankbait company is Spro, by the way. So another vote for Spro. Spro is good. Mike Temple, Spro. Joey Metcalf, Spro. Their prices tell you they're good. Spro. They're not the cheapest. Well, no. you, got, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. We can go up. Have you tried one of them crankbaits from Walmart? No. One of them. What is that? What is that Walmart brand called? Lucky Strike. Huh? Ozark Trail. Ozark, Ozark Trail. Trail. Yeah. I can tell you about their damn rain suits. They don't work. <laughs> 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 I can tell you that. I don't know about their crankbaits, but their rain suits are trash. We don't talk about those crankbaits. Oh, let's see. You keep stuff like that. So if somebody's with you and you're like, hey, you got another one of those? Yeah, man. Here. Look, so, so Eric Crowley, it's <laughs> Ra Paula. Rapala. Rapala. Ra it's a rapala. Say the way he wants to. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, where where does where was Rapala? I mean, this is the salmon, salmon, salmon conversation all over again. Yeah, what's yeah? There's several things like that. Yes, there's, potato, uh, potato. To, yeah, uh, 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 no, what's it? Pecan or pecan? Pecan. It's a pecan pie to me, man. What do you say? Pecan. Pecan. You sure you ain't got no Yankee in you? Not a bit. Not a bit. You 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 do eat grits, right? I eat a lot of. Grits. I know you do. I'm just wanting cheese grits. We better not catch you with cream of wheat. Grits. You don't put sugar on your grits, do you? Hell no. Do you put sugar on your grits? Hell Listen, no. y'all know uh, Slick Johnson with the Alabama Vice Council on TikTok. You ever follow him? That Joker puts sugar on his grits. Well, we all can be perfect. Sugar on it, and he will. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, and he he defends it. He defends putting well, sugar on his Alabama grits. How? Huh? How does he defend it? He de he got on a TikTok one day. They sitting at a Waffle House, and he made a TikTok because he TikToks everywhere he goes. And guys, seriously, is, he's pretty entertaining. If you're on TikTok, follow the, follow Slick Johnson twenty three or the Alabama Bass Council. But he's sitting there, and they were putting sugar on it. He put sugar on his grits, and all the guys were sitting around looking at him like, "What are you doing?" And he just he went on a rant about it. So, uh, which one of those crankbaits do we not talk about? The Norman DD cranks. Mm -hmm. Norman, listen, I think Norman. And uh, even some of the Bagley baits that nobody talks about, you still can catch a lot of fish on them jokers. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. The Normans right there catch They catch do. Fish. Well, you, well, still, you know, when nobody mentions Strike King either, and yet they have the biggest spread of crankbaits in any tackle store you can The go only to. thing they I do. don't have was uh, the only cuss I have with Strike King is you don't know if you're going to get a bait that runs, runs true or not. Out of the pack, you have to tweak every one of oh, them. Oh, Sheffield showed up. I pop in, and I finally, I finally pop in, and I see Farmer telling lies. What's new? Listen, listen. He's been very good today, right? We've got he's him drunk, buddy. He's juice. spilling juice left he has and right. Been, he's been participating of the Etowah Mead Beer and Wines eighteen thirty three tonight. It's there, lit up in here. He is lit. He's not. I'm just it, it, took, it took two to get me there. I'm, I'm a treat drunk. You're, apparently. Well, you're a big boy. You're a big boy, so I'm sure it takes a few. Ruh 
Paula. That's you know that's going to be what nobody's going to take a damn thing. You can away. always Paula count on Jason. <laughs> Rapala. Yeah, nobody's going nobody's going to worry about anything tonight except how to say Rapala. Jason Jason fishes with me all the time, so is that what wondering is? who that is? Yeah, yeah that's the burn. Uh, but uh, Storm Wiggle Wart's a good one right there. Surf Dad, I wouldn't bank. Oh, I saw those. Danny appreciate the monthly sack. Hey, it was a good one, wasn't it? Um, I yeah, you you got it too. The monthly. I did. You did. So I, I told you it was a great. It was a good one. I had to make up for December and January, but it was an absolute good one. So I put some thought into that one. I gave it to my neighbor. Did you really? No. You liked it that much, so I said, <laughs> But I did what? notice that before you, I sent out. So guys, for you don't know, listen, you can subscribe on our YouTube channel. We have we have four, uh, three different subscription levels. The so four ninety nine is just you like what the heck we do and you just want to support the channel, and we appreciate you guys to do that. There's, there's people to do that. For nine ninety nine a month, you get uh, members only content, which includes fishing reports. And one thing that I'm getting ready to do is really up that game. Ryan does them every time that he goes fishing, but also I'm working with guys on. Uh, but here, here's my goal is I'm trying to get guys on every single lake in Georgia, but I'm starting off with North Georgia that are going to give me reports of what they're actually biting. And then we're going to give you that information, but that's for members only. And then $49.99, you get that. Plus you get a box of baits every month. And we try to do those baits uh, that what will be good during that time frame of the month coming up. So, uh, but I, I laughed because you said, I ain't never caught nothing on a fire crawl. And I sent out a fire crawl slobber knocker and I started laughing. You said, I ain't never caught Crap on a fire crawl. I thought, like, dang. Well, you will now. You got to fish that slobber knocker. You got to get a shot. It might work. You never know. But again, if yeah. any of you guys want to join ass. that, you can go. To, yeah, they're good. Well, you can go and subscribe. And uh, again, and we're also going to be doing some other things um, coming up in the near future that I haven't told you about. But we're working out the details on a buyer's club kind of thing where you get some very killer discounts on tackle. And also, when we put out a video, we're going to try to start doing this and work it in where members only gets to see the videos before the general public and all that. So those are kind of the things that we're doing. So you guys say, hey, I encourage you to subscribe. It's a great way to support the channel and it helps us uh, grow and give you some better content. We just got a lot of stuff planned in 2024. You guys are going to love that stuff. So let's get right back on it. Uh, Ryan did say the deep little N and big little N from Norman and the DD-22. Mm -hmm. So those are good ones. Uh, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, the DD, uh, the deep little N or the deep whatever, little N, N has a real skinny bill. It comes out and real narrow. That's I love that for speed cranking. That's why the Mega Bass 300X yeah is good for it. Um, I'm pretty sure um, River Sea's got one that the Tactical Boys do. It's that tactical shad that they've got. It's got right now. I want something that's got a tight wobble, mm -hmm. but gets deep quick, and I can speed crank. If if you get a bait that comes out and goes has that big U. At the bottom, right? It's digging too much. Digging too much, but like with the rock crawler, you wanted to dig, mm, right? Yeah, but I'm fishing it on bottom. Speed cranking, I don't have to touch bottom. You just try to hit that bait ball and I can be over seventy foot of water. I got what you're saying. Throwing the, a fifteen foot diver over seventy foot of water. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. So let me. Okay. So we're talking crankbaits a lot with this pre-spawn stuff. Now I know you mentioned Kevin. You like throwing a spinner bait this time of year. Uh, you had you listed what. Re refresh my memory on your Rattle list. Rattle trap, crankbait, spinnerbait, and jig. Okay, but other than the jig, you're going for reaction bite on all of them. Yes. Okay, what? what the what? jig, I'm going to throw around rock and docks. Okay, that's what I was going to say. So where are you targeting with the jig, slowing down? So structure. Mm -hmm. so and I'll throw it with grass if you can find it. But usually any grass has been beat to hell. Right. In Oconee and Sinclair. Yeah. So. Okay, Tim, what about you? Let me let you jump in the comments for a section. What are you throwing this time of year? And I'll also, throw, you need I'll to throw a spin a bait, a spinner bait all times of the year. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, while, while I got you with that camera on your pretty face, I always tell you, make sure you shout out your social media real quick. So go ahead and throw your oh, stuff out. Oh, anybody wants to follow my shenanigans, just T underscore McGuire Outdoors on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Not hard to find on any of that. Yeah. I watch his stuff to find fishing holes on Altoona. Yeah, farmer finds fishing holes. <laughs> you fish Altoona a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's good though, because we can't get them Altoona boys to talk. Man, that's them guys tight, are tight lip. Tight I don't lip. tell you anything. Tight I don't tell you lip. Nothing at all. Uh, 
That's, uh, that's funny. Let's see. Dar right there at the very bottom, Darren Moss. Can we stop talking crankbaits before I get online and go broke uh, in about an hour? <laughs> Hey, welcome to the I, club, listen, buddy. It it, it's not an hour; it's fifteen minutes. Yeah, but yeah, we, yeah, <laughs> we, ain't, we, yeah, we ain't got much time left on this. But I, I tell you what, though, that's seriously. Um, I'm not a crankbait guy. I don't like throwing crankbaits that much. But this time of year, I will always have one. I don't know. It's a Spro Rock Crawler most of the time. I will throw the Rapala, the Rapala DT6 or DT8. I'll throw that in a little bit, but. I'm I'm going for that shallow, like on the near, I'm hitting rocks. Where I see like exposed rocks and stuff, I like bringing that stuff kind of down through that. But again, other than a crankbait, he throws a jig a little bit. What do you throw other than crankbaits? Because we this has turned into a crankbait show. But the <laughs> well, jig, the crankbaits well, are hard. Yeah, to we beat went down a crankbait farm. rabbit hole. They're hard. They're hard to beat. I it's, get it. This time of the year. This time of the year, it's hard to beat. But for those that don't like throwing crankbaits, yeah. I don't think you can beat a jig right now. As far as, especially if you're going after big girl, but what about you? What are you throwing this time of year <laughs> other than that? Jigs, um, spinnerbait, chatterbait. How are you just doing his list? No, he didn't have a chatterbait. Yeah, he did. I, no, I had spinnerbait. Well, what was I it? have chatterbait, but I, I you just do throw a chatterbait if, no. if you, know, you, throw, you, you like you, chatterbait. You're throwing the jig after the sun really comes up a little bit, warms the water up. Starting but I'm I'm before. I'm power fishing a jig. Yeah, I'm what they call stroking a jig. I, <laughs> yeah, don't start. It's a real term. <laughs> I'm still trying. Yum to yum. Get, yum 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 yum. Parental yum. consent advised. <laughs> What'd if you I say, Kevin? If I pitch up in a if I pitch up in a lay down, and I drag that jig up to the limb and stop it, if they don't pick it off that limb. When I pop it loose, I pop it and pop it one more time hard, make it look like it's trying Getting to run away, away yeah. and they'll eat it as it starts to drop back down. Same thing with around rock piles or docks. Don't even Get that core strike. Day. So you stroke your jig and you like mm -hmm. to pop it. And pop it. That's a big thing on the Tennessee River. <laughs> I bet it is. This is getting worse by the minute. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. Um, okay. But. All right, so let's say somebody hates throwing jigs because I get a lot of customers that come up in the shop and they're like, I can't fish a jig. I just, you know, there's a lot of people that just like, man, I can't catch anything. Can't catch jig. anything on a jig. I don't like the way it feels. I feel like I've heard terms like I feel like I'm dragging grass, just mush. Give me an alternative to the jig. I would throw a shaky head, but I mean, it's a shaky head. Hard head. I'm throwing a hard head. Okay. The, the, the uh, wobble head, the wobble like head. a wobble head, yeah. like a wobble head. Okay, yeah. now y'all getting into my secret juice. You like throwing? <laughs> you like the wobble head? Do you, you really seriously you, like it? Because I don't talk to too many guys that throw it. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's I, I will come behind you and catch your fish on a wobble head. <laughs> Ron's jumped knows. on my I hate jig fishing bandwagon. Here. But that's it, seriously though. And I'm being very serious with that. We have a lot of guys come in and they're like, I hate throwing a jig. I have no confidence throwing a jig. And I used to be one of those guys. I hated throwing it but until you get used to the bite and everything. I think they can't mm -hmm. slow down is what it is. You but, think that's what it is? It just it, it takes too much. You know, the speed's got to be a little slower this time of it's year. It's like Jonathan and I were talking about. You you know, you're sweeping that thing along. You got to let it soak for a minute because they're going to follow it along. And they're either going to, when it drags, they're going to hit it. Or they're going to look at it and just scoop it up. You'll feel that tick when they pick it up. Right now, you're wanting it just drug on the bottom. Right. I it, mean, in the summertime, I'm I'm trying four or five ways to get them to bite yeah and they stay hooked better with that jig than they do on a yeah. shaky head or a worm that oh, I, yeah. I get i get to use a big rod and big line like a big boy like a big boy <laughs> that's right you get to stick it to them it gets to cross their eyes like that but so speaking of that i just see somebody in the comment right there jekyll productions ned rig oh yeah right there, there. Jekyll, so yeah. the ned rig the ned rig listen i know you don't like but that thing catches fish it catches fish. A Ned I have tried catches and fish. tried and tried to throw that and be good with it. Oh, it catches dinks. But you catch a lot of them. But you know what the problem is with a Ned rig for a lot of people? They go too fast. A Ned rig right. is a net. So that is called the Midwestern finesse technique. It's where something like that. That's where it come. That's where it originated from. It was done in cold water. And by the guy that got it started, that Ned, whatever, Ned somebody, I forget his name. Rig. Huh? Rig. 
I, how, I knew you would know it, Mister. I know all this stuff, but he did it very slow. I mean, it's it's, it's so light. I, you you have to go, yeah, but you have to. You do the old Bill Payne. If it's slow, slow down. You know, so you probably it catches big fish. I don't know if Ann's still watching, but that's her go-to bait, and she's she oh, I know five pounders in fish. on it. I know it catches big fish because I've gotten my tail kicked by it. <laughs> it is. But Barday it, has waxed my tail. I don't know how many times with that. You know what's funny? Tiny Bar little worm. What is Barday like six foot eight and all that? Big guy throwing a Ned rig and all that. It's kind of like big guys with dogs. Mm. Kind of like Ryan. Ryan's six foot six. How, how tall are you? Y'all same height? Six five. Six five. Ryan's six five and his dogs. No, are Ryan's like, six seven. He's two inches taller. He's, than okay. Yeah, Ryan's six he's, seven. He's and his dogs together weigh a combined 22 pounds. And they got pretty hair and all that. I think the bigger the guy, the smaller the dog. I got a big lab. What are you talking about? Huh? I'm just, it just, I see it all. You're talking like, like accessory it. dog? Like, except Ryan's got a purse dog. A what? He's got a purse dog. Oh. Ryan's I, got a purse you, dog. You, oh. you should, you should see the, uh, monstrosity when me and ryan are in the same boat together <laughs> it looks like the twin towers sitting i could imagine i can imagine you two hugging playing basketball violating some coast guard regulations mm, did you know, know that did you guys a little know, overweight did you know that back in the day there mcguire that ryan and uh farmer played basketball against each other in high school oh wow i bet that was a show i guarantee they have rubbed they have rubbed each other in ways that you can't imagine oh. huh yeah. I've seen you hugging in here too. Yeah. I've got pictures of it. I hope no yum yum was involved. That would be one yeah. ugly thing right there. That, Ryan, do I look like Ryan? No, <laughs> no. I, my question was, yes. I can't even go down. I, can't, I, don't, I don't even know where oh, they'll go with that one. But that would be the we tail spun. That would be the one time that I would see yum yum and would never speak of it ever again. <laughs> That would end yum yum. That's the end of it. That's the no end. No more yum yum. You and Ryan yum yuming on the boat. Nope. 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 Huh? Nope. I have to get a new boat. I, I, I need some <laughs> of that stronger stuff you got. You over would here. have to just get it. You'd have to power wash that boat. That would be awful. Like that. Oh my God. I'm going to go home tonight. If y'all come into the store and see Danny, he'll explain all this to you. You can get you some. No, you ain't going to get no yum yum. No. <laughs> you don't no. sell it here? No, I don't sell <laughs> yum yum here. Ain't going here. So. There's those guys out in the comment that's still like, what in the hell are they yeah, talking about? Like, they have no idea. That comes to the 49. Ryan, you got to come by the store and talk to Danny while you're in here shopping, and he'll explain this all to you. I tell so you, you what, can you come in, in you spend $100. I'll tell you there what you it go. is. You got to spend $100, yeah. of, of, and I'll tell you what, what that is. So, Pro Little uh, John DD is good, but only about 1 in 10 can be tuned to run straight in my experience. I've seen several comments uh, in there where people are talking about the tuning of Spros. I've never had a problem with Spro or Rapala. Uh, the Normans, I do. The only the Normans, the essential series in the Spro is where I've had the issue. Okay, with, with the tune because they're the cheaper of the line, so they're higher in those pretty well. Rock crawlers, I hardly. Hit. The only time I have a problem with rock crawlers is if you um, get hung or something like that, or bang it off a rock, or make a bad cast, bang it off or bang it off the bank or yeah. a dock. Then you have to work on it, but right, right. So there you go. I, I that, think unfortunately, all manufacturing these days is having some issues, or just across the board with mm -hmm. with the uh, products and the way just things. Just post are COVID, going. yeah. I mean, post everything. COVID, it's in everything. This weird thing about crankbaits is you buy ten identical baits, but one out of the bunch has all the juice. Odd. You ever found that you just get a favorite one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that, that makes sense. Uh, rock crawler solid. If you catch a few on a little John around rocks, docks, I have to pull a few out. They get very out of whack. And once they do, it's tough to get back. Right. Uh, so uh, yeah, I get that. So, but I think that like, I think that's with a lot of baits, spinner baits, you know, I mean, you get, spinner baits get out of tune so fast. Oh, bad. bad. So, so bad. I mean, I had a, no, Ryan, I am not. You are the better spinner bait fisherman. Hands down. I'm, I'll give you that. <laughs> oh, is that it? Y'all yeah, the old, uh, when you speak of spinner baits, the old Terminator, not Terminator, the titanium. Yeah. Titanium, yeah. Custom. They never got out of whack. Really? They sprung right back to where they were straight as an arrow. Yeah, that was some solid stuff. You can't stuff. find them anymore. No. And when you do, they're $25, $30. Yeah, on, on eBay. eBay. On eBay. Um, do you think that's just because of what they were made out of? Titanium. The, the titanium yeah. wire and all that? Well, if that's – let me ask you this. If that's so good, why don't more companies make it out of it? You know, you Striking a, had it to begin with. They right? had nine pros that, that uh, designed nine different spinner baits. And then 
Rapala bought them out and right. produced them for maybe two years because I used to go up to uh, Hammonds and buy them, have them order for me. And Rapala quit making them too. It might have been because of the uh, titanium expense and, and making the titanium wire. You can buy a titanium spinner bait, the head, but you can't buy the wire. Really? Mm hmm. Okay, there you go. That, that's new. No, uh, Justin Warren. Hey guys, what's going on, Justin? You're a little bit late, and we're about to end the show. But appreciate you showing up uh, like that. So, uh, buzz baits are the worst about getting out of tune. And that, I was going to say that I had one of those accent B2Bs, those those floating ones, and uh, a three pound spot on near just trashed that thing. <laughs> I, I mean, it listen, it it bent that thing five different ways, and I could not. Could not get that back in tune. Uh, Ron also said, uh, jumping on what you guys were talking about, or you were talking about, Kevin, I had one of those titanium strike king ones. It was great, but eventually broke, which they all will, but it was great spinnerbait. Um, War Eagles are the best out there now, but after about five or six fish, you better cut it off and build a new one. And um, that's that seems like Seems like that's just a trend in spinner baits and stuff like that. Everybody's War Eagles going, always been so soft, though. They're lead. They they make great spinner baits, but they're lead so soft, and their wire is so fe uh, flimsy. But do you think that gives it the better action though? Until you get the fish, it's on. got a good vibration. Good vibration off the board. Yeah, because that's all about you know. I mean, you got to have that little bit hook of, on it, but huh? I don't care for the hook on it. But. Right, but the thinner the wire, the more vibration it's going to give off, and that's essentially what you're trying to get with and the spinner. It's going to bend and break. Oh, yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. I get that. So, what about the don't, old don't. storm thin fan? Hard to cast, but dang bass love them. I love it. Jonathan's over here, like don't, 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 don't. Yep. So, what about the old storm thin fan? You still got any of those? I got two left. You get, they still make them, right? They still have them. What is so I good about that bait? I, I, if I'm buying from Storm, I'm buying Wiggle Wart. You like the Wiggle Wart and all that? Especially right now. Okay. The original Wiggle Wart or the, the original? 4035 wire, Ryan says like that. So, but I, I mean, I think, I think to get the, well, let me ask you, how did, how was the, th just because you brought it up, how was the thump on that titanium compared to? Great thump because the wire is real thin. Because the titanium was so strong, you could get away with the thinner wire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So, throw a War Eagle Double Colorado, a Johnson 150 outboard pulls less than that thing does. <laughs> so it definitely gets the gets the thump going right there. Uh, all right, real quick, spinnerbait trailers. I like the Cast Echo or Bare Naked without a trailer. What about y'all? I will just say this: Ryan's gonna pop it up in the comments. I don't care what you throw; you better have a trailer hook on it. Um, but yeah. what about what what do you like to throw on the back of your spinner baits? I don't have a trailer hook. Ever. You don't not trailer, but what about the trailer? Do you what do you use a trailer? I use an old cheap trailer and I use that KVD uh I can't think of the name of the fish now, but it's uh sectioned in the back mm -hmm. and it's got just a good curve to it. We're okay back and forth in the water. Back and forth. What about you, Tim? I don't use any kind of stinger hook or trailer hook, and most of the time I throw them without any trailer. Or if I do put a trailer on it, it's just a little straight. Two tail, twin tail? Yeah, a little thing. twin tail, maybe chartreuse or white, something in that ballpark. All right, what about you, Farmer? What are you throwing your spinner baits? Unless it's a secret. No, it's not a secret. You can see the wheels spinning here. No, I'm, um, I usually just use the Zoom spinner bait trailer. Uh, the whatever. Too long. Yeah, little it's too long little thing. Or I'll put a. Is that what Ryan uses? Yeah, yeah or, I'll put a, or I'll put a swim bait on the back of it. Bass Thank Pro you. Shops Cajun trailer. I knew Ryan would pop into that. He's big, but Ryan's always, yeah. always got a stinger hook or a trailer. But hook. I put one, up. one of the earlier questions we were talking about spinner baits, and, and Tim chimed in too. You throwing a Colorado Willow or you throwing a double Colorado during this time of year on the pre spawn? Depending on how dirty the water is. Yeah. If it's Ocon or which one, which one's more dirty? Like, is it Sinclair or Oconee? I Sinclair. can't ever. Sinclair. If I'm on Sinclair, it's double Colorado because it's just mud. If I'm on Altoona up in Little River, Double Colorado. If I'm foot, foot and a half. Visibility. Col yeah, Colorado Willow. Colorado Willow. Yeah, because if you're if you're in muddy, nasty water, it's going to slow it down. It's creating a thump because they're not hunting by sight at that point. It's those uh, lateral lines. They're radaring on that thing. Yeah, that's why. Because like, even a blind like fish that. eats. A blind fish does eat. That's why I like that square bill when it's. When it's right, really time for it, I still like it because it's putting out a lot more thump than just okay. your normal crankbait. Okay, that make that makes sense. So, all right, guys, well, I tell you what, hey, we're about almost two hours in, so we're gonna we're gonna 
in the episode again next Thursday, especially for all you Lake Lanier guys. And I encourage everybody uh, who doesn't know this name, but Paul Driscoll is going to be on the show next Thursday night. So you definitely want to tune into that. I'm going to see if I can get him to drop some secrets. But, uh, Jonathan, I appreciate you jumping in here after work. I know you had a long day and uh, great conversation with you. Great information, Kevin, as always. Uh, good to see you up here on a Thursday night and uh, safe travels next week. And, can, uh, Tim, again, thank you for uh, – Doing all the work, a lot, a lot of stuff uh, in the comment section tonight. So you were a busy, busy guy, and uh, you guys back there in the in the gallery, we appreciate you guys joining us. So again, hey, guys, we love you. You guys make the show. We hope you enjoyed the, uh, tonight's episode. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and all that. You have no idea how much it helps. And check out that membership. Some really good stuff coming down the line. And uh, if you're out on the water, it's going to be cold this weekend. Be safe. Make sure you dress appropriately. We don't want to hear about any accidents or anybody falling in. And, you know, it, it's it's cold. Water's in what, low 40s, low 40s, mid 40s? I think 40s. somebody told me today it was 41, 42 when they got there. Well, 40 mm -hmm. water's not scary. It's the wind. Well, yeah, the wind's going to be bad this weekend, too. Yeah, for sure. If so. you're looking well, at 11 be degrees, careful. the wind chill factor is going to get it down to zero. Be yeah. very, Be very careful. Because we had we had two fall in Saturday. Wow! Wow! So it's yeah. Be guys, very careful. Yeah, that's something else you can talk about on the show one evening is uh, what they need to carry in the boat with them in the event. They do yeah, we on. do. Yeah, guys, that would be good. That would be a good topic. So, uh, guys, hey, listen, you guys in the comment section appreciate that. Yeah, Phil, give me a holler tomorrow. And uh, hey, guys, look for all the stuff we got coming down the line. But if nothing else, enjoy your weekend, enjoy some time with your family, and we will see you next Thursday night with Paul Driscoll here on the Live Well. You guys have a great evening.